Hi guys, this is Ravenclaw with a fuck. I'm back to another what if story. Now, um, before we get into this what if, um, in the next couple days after, well, I release this part of my Fallen Angel Deku from High School D DXD, I'll be released, I'll be working on the script for, um, what if Deku has a Yandere, or uh, Yandere girlfriend. That's gonna be interesting. So, it's gonna be, like, a few of you got it right. I specifically picked a certain character from Class 1A, from the female roster, to be the Yandere. So, anyways, let's not worry about that. We'll worry about that when I get into uh, making a script for this. Why this series was hard to start, and I really don't know where where uh, where I want to take it after I get you know this um, part zero finished. So hopefully I'll figure it out down down I go. Now, after I do this, then the part zero to my Yandere girlfriend, I will probably go back to um, what if Ducky caught the eye of a vampire and and so on what I was prior going to do. I just want to. The random idea can pop my head anyway, so let's get on to our what if. As we start our, um, sorry, as we start off our what if with Inkyo and Asashi, they would, um, when they first met, they didn't like each other. Most would say they, uh, they hated each other. Even when they fell, they would constantly try to kill each other surprisingly um they agreed on one thing they had no uh they had no um interest in joining the fallen angel faction or want anything anything to do with the other factions in their pit their petty politics the moment hasashi saved inko from stray fallen angels taking several light spears Shielding Inko from any harm. The moment Inko saw Hasashi protecting her from getting hurt, be well because of her. So that simple act, their relationship will change. As Hasashi is shielding, well, Inko as there's several light spears piercing his body. Don't you dare die on me! You're not allowed to die. I'm the only one who's supposed to kill you. Your life belongs to me, not those ingrates. As Asashi coughs up blood, don't worry, my black tough. It's gonna take a lot. It's gonna take a. It's gonna take a few light spears to kill me. And you ingrates. As Inko looks furiously at the fallen angels, make your peace, ingrates. You will pay for hurting him. Immediately, four angel, well, four fallen angel wings pop out of Inko's back. As light spears scatter the sky. As they rain down on the stray fallen angels, killing them instantly. As a huge magical circle form in the sky. Holy lightning. As Holy Lightning strikes down on any of the survive any of the survivors, if there were if there were any from her first attack. As Asashi looks at Inko, that was a bit overkill. I'm only allowing I'm the only one allowed allowed to kill you. I will show no mercy to anyone that tries to take what's mine. I did forget how deadly you are with those with those light spears. As Asashi laughs nervously, as Asashi coughs up a little blood, before he could fall down, Inko catches him. As Inko looks at him with a concerned look, as Inko takes Asashi to get healed at a random abandoned church, not the same one in, in the DXD, DXD anime, as Inko never left his side during the during his recovery. After all these years they've been fighting, they never once had a civil conversation during Asashi's um, recovery. 
they slowly started to have conversations. Normally, well, sorry, normally Inka would be annoyed and furious with Sasashi ever since that night. She has started to have a fondness for him that slowly turned into something more. As Sasashi has always had a fascination for Inka since they, the moment they, they first met. Purposely starting conflict with Inka so he could spend more time with her. Until one day something happened that she never thought would would be possible. She was shocked that she found out she was pregnant. The mere odds of two fallen angels producing the offspring was very rare. Normally they would have to reproduce with the other species like humans and other and and other species to add to the fallen angels population. Eventually, Izuku was born. As we cut back to Earth, in a di different dimension, in the middle of a battlefield, there is a man wearing a red cloak, watching all his friends fight for their lives. As Doctor Strange gets a glimpse of a possible future and location by a by a by oh sorry by a unknown force. Immediately after he absorbed all the information, his attention is, was was brought back to the battlefield, as he sees the Avengers scatter around dead, as Thanos walks slowly towards Doctor Strange with a cocky grin on his face, as Doctor Strange rushes towards Thanos, only be caught, as Thanos caught him by 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 his neck. Pathetic. This is a sorry. So this is a Sorcerer Supreme. Pathetic. As Thanos snaps his neck. As Doctor Strange wakes up. Breathing heavy from a dry sweat. Doctor Strange has been getting these nightmares. For a few months straight now. As Doctor Strange gather all the magical knowledge. To see if this alternate universe. Is real or. Or. It's just his imagination. Or oh, sorry. I fucked that up. Or just a normal nightmare because of his imagination getting the better of him. As he was shocked that when he found out it actually does exist. So he decided to observe the 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 dimension himself. It did worry it did worry him about the source of the information he got. He observed this new dimension between the angels, devils, and the fallen angels factions until he came across a unique fallen angel fallen angels living in a in this abandoned church as a family. They even have a small baby together. Even the devil family, the Grim or whatever I can't pronounce her name right now. Is a very unique. Memories were, were very unique for devils. The two families intrigued him. Doctor Strange the most. Doctor Strange, even observed some small conflict between the fallen angel family and some stray devils. He was quite impressed by their magical ability. How the female, um, the female fallen angel is quite overprotective over her child, even with all the powers they have. They seem to have no interest in, in, in any of the factions. It seems like they are just trying to live a peaceful life. Until Doctor Strange got a bit of information that the fallen angel factions were planning to force them to join or die. So Dr. Strange decided to make his first contact three days before the Fallen Angels begin their plan. They plan, they plan to capture the, the young Fallen Angel boy to force them to submit to, uh, to, uh, to join their faction. Dr. Strange has made contact with Zerzik Lucifer. Oddly, Dr. Strange and this devil got along pretty well. He informed Zerzik. Lucifer of his plan and the fallen angel family living in one of the abandoned churches of his territory. 
the only reason Zerzik has left left of them alone for so long. He has a friendly he has a friendly relationship with Osashi. They have met a couple times by pure chance. And they've always left with a they've always left peacefully. As Inko and Asashi was was in the middle of teaching their son how to use his magic properly and chat with channeling exercises. As they hear a knock on the door, as Asashi nods to Inko, as he walks towards the door, as Inko has um, Izuku behind her, while she has a light spear, a light weapon in, in her hand. It's a spear, basically, what I'm trying to say. To shoot at the door, if it's, a, if it's any threat. As Asashi opens the door, I must apologize for the unexpected visit in such a late hour. Allow to allow me to proper introduce myself. I am Sorcerer Supreme, Stephen Strange. I mostly go by Doctor Strange. And for reason for my visit, I have some information you might want to know. Come in, Mister Strange. If you try anything funny, my little black dove, my little black dove won't allow you to leave alive. Let's talk. As they walk in the main, well, room, Doctor Strange sees the female angel standing in front of her son, light spear in hand, in in a predict in a predictive um stance. What do you want with us? Do you know what we are, human? Indeed, ma'am. I am Sorcerer Supreme Stephen Strange, but most people just call me Doctor Strange. Use whatever title. You're more comfortable with. Are you some sort of exorcist? No, I have no affiliation with any of the factions. I came here to form you some information that I came across. I mean your family no harm. Forgive me if I don't believe that. It's quite alright. It's quite alright. It's understandable. You're only trying to protect your family. So what information do you have for us? Dipping on the information, I'll allow you to leave here alive. Very well, may I ask your name? Inko. Very nice to meet you, Inko. Now, for the main reason I'm here, I came across some information that the Fallen Angel faction are planning to kidnap your son and forcing you to join their faction. Hasashi, we need to find a new, we need to find a new location. Is it... If this information is true, how long do we have? Three days. What's the other reason you're here? You're very sharp. You're a very sharp woman. And the other reason I'm here, I wanted to, to meet you in your family. I would like to offer you... I'd like to offer you and your family a proposal. What kind of proposal? We have no interest in other factions at all. We have no... Sorry. We have no interest in, in the other factions, any of them. The proposal ha has nothing to do with the factions, even if they, even if you want to stay, stay, um, stay neutral, they will always come after you, no matter what, where you go. If you accept my proposal, not only the devils and the, and, and the angels, and the human factions won't be able to do, won't be able to reach you. I knew there was something strange about you since the moment you entered the room. I sim I simply want you fallen angels to guard my sanctum. If you agree to the proposal. And before you ask, no, I'm not from this world. I'm from a different different dimension. If you want to go that far. I expect you have some thoughts. I expect you have thoughts. Sorry, I expect you thought that over that uh, that already. It was one of the possibilities I thought about. So, if we agree to this proposal, I I expect you be taking us to your dimension to guard your sanctum. From what? Nothing at the moment, Miss Inko. I simply wanted to have to find some powerful guard for my sanctum. From 
a guard for my sanctum. You most likely serve as guardians than anything else. You'll have a way to raise your family without other factions getting involved. I think Go looks over to Sashi as as she discusses what they're planning to do. I think Go walks towards Doctor Strange. We have our decision. We accept. We know f far too well that nowhere on this planet will be sorry. No one's plan will be safe from us from the other factions. From their little conflict. My son's safety is my main priority. And and I want him to have a somewhat normal life. As Doctor Strange and Inko shake well shake on it, as a magical circle appeared on the ground in the well, middle of the room. Please stand in the middle of the circle once you're ready to leave. Another dimension interesting. As Doctor Strange sees a six-year-old Izuku, I can't wait to go go exploring. Not so fast, young man. You're not allowed to go, not allowed to go exploring until you're able to channel your magic properly and able to create a proper light spear. Yes, ma'am. And Cinco picks up her son in, in her arms. All three of the fallen angels step in the middle of the circle and disappear with Doctor Strange as they re, uh, as they reappeared in the sanctum. As Inko was memorized by the beauty of the place, all sorts of magical artifacts scattered all around. As Doctor Strange and the three fallen angels sorry, as Doctor Strange give a tour to the three fallen angels Show them around this, uh, the sanctum. And as they get to a room where Doctor Strange opens the door as this room is, has its own pocket dimension. As immediately Inko sees a, a house in in middle of a field. As Doctor Strange uh, informs him that they'll be staying here. In this dimension. So she could raise her family without any, um, any in interference from, from, uh, from anyone. As we time skip, as as you see a fourteen year old Izuku flying around with his mother, as as Sasha sees Inka with a bright smile, Sasha only sees that expression on her face only when she's around her son. As soon as Inka and um, Izuku notice Sasha, they immediately descend down to the grass to meet him. Asashi's been busy with Dr. Strange for a few months. As Inko rushes over to Asashi and gives him a big hug. What's going on? You're back early. A lot has happened since we last spoke. Dear, what's going on? Apparently there's a group of humans call themselves the Avengers. Some sort of superhero team. Superhero. Inko giving Asashi a, a confused look. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it, Inko. According to the, according to Strange, the Avengers of uh, the Avengers want 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 to meet us. I guess we could do that. What do we do about Izuku, though? Bring him. You can't be serious. We don't know what dangers this world has. You can't keep him here forever. Eventually, his curiosity will get the better of him. He'll go on his own eventually. At least this way, you have a better way to protect, to to protect him. If if something does happen, fine. Izuku, come here, dear. You want to see me, mother? We'll be heading outside of the sanctum. I want you on your best behavior. Of course, mom. I wouldn't dream of the uh, de pleasing you. How how you been, father? Good, my boy. I learned a few tricks. I'll teach you. Um, I'll teach you later, son. But first, we're going on a little family trip. To where, father? We're going to meet a group of humans calling themselves the Avengers. They wanted to meet us for some reason. It gives you a perfect chance to quote unquote explore. 
as he whispers that last part to Izuku, if we're going to meet these humans, we might as well go now. Indeed, Miss Inko. As Aaron looks over to Doctor Strange. Oh, sorry, something popped up. I need to get that out of the way first before we, before we continue. As Aaron steps through a portal that Doctor Strange created. As they step inside it, as they reappear outside of the Avenger headquarters. As Doctor Strange buzzes the gate. To uh, two informed Avengers that they have arrived. I mean, your father will deal with this. As much as I hate to say this, why don't you go off? Ex why don't you go off exploring? Please stay out of trouble, dear. Cause trouble? I would never do such a thing, mother. As Deku has his hands behind his back, as his fingers are crossed, as Deku jumps up in the air. As two fallen angel wings pop out of his back as he takes flight. Leaving a gust of wind the moment he jumped off and took flight. As Ducky flies well, around the city. As something caught his eye as he sees an obese man wearing a white suit. And a man tied to a chair that's wearing some sort of costume. As Deku hovers down, as, uh, as, as Izuku gets to the front door of this building, or this complex, as he, as he begins to talk with the, the security guards immediately, when he asks if he could go in, they allow him to, um, I'll, I'll allow him to go in, instantly. As he, as he continues his process from each level, Every checkpoint in, 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 in the building. We've been doing this a long time, Spider-Man. This back, this back and forth is, is no longer appeals to me. What, you cheating on me, Kingpin? What will I ever do? What will I ever do? Funny, webhead. When Spider-Man... Was about to say something. He he noticed someone else in, in the room, as he's just looking around at uh, at all the paintings and artifacts that are displayed all around the office. Fascinating painting. This is is this original or fake? Original, of course. I'm above such things as spending money on fakes. Ever you see here is the original, my boy. Wait, who the hell are you, kid? How did you get here? Without breaking eye contact with the painting as Izuku was, well, without breaking eye contact with the painting that Izuku was staring at, as he points to the door, you think, you think just because you took out my guards? Hurt your lovely, your, hurt your lovely staff? Of course not. Your guards are, your guards as you call them, are all healthy. How did you get up here? I simply asked, of course. You humans are a lot more nicer than I, than, uh, than I was told. As Deku sits on a chair, spare chair, drinking some tea. As Spider-Man and Kingpin are wondering where the hell he got, he got a teacup and tea to begin with. When I was exploring, I came across your situation, and it intrigued me, so I, so I'll leave it up to fate, how, how I should act. As Deku picked up a coin that was sitting on the desk, as Deku flips the coin around his fingers, to, to keep it fair, if it lands on heads, I'll help the strange costume man in the chair over there. If it lands on um, tails, I'll simply walk away. You can't be serious, kid, as Spider-Man finally spoke up. Serious? Serious? No. That's what's going to happen regardless. Even Kingpin could tell that there's something off. This kid's not normal. As, as immediately Ducky throws some... Light spears at the desk. 
stop from Kingpin from reaching out from the drawer, grabbing his gun. Next time you lose an arm, human. Now, let's begin, shall we? As Deku flips the coin. Fascinating. As he moment the the coin the coin light on heads. As Izuku says, fascinating. I guess shall we shall we begin? Without uh, getting out of um his seat, Deku sees Spider Man broke out of his bindings and sock Kingpin across the face as they begin their battle. As Kingpin throws Spider Man out the window. As he rushes towards Deku, Deku, um, conjure one wing out of his back, shoots that, um, feathers at Kingpin, pinning him to the wall as Spider-Man swings back into the building, landing on, on, on his feet. Before Kingpin could say anything else, Spider-Man uses web, webbing to cover Kingpin's mouth. That's enough of you already. Well, that's enough of you. I appreciate the sis, kid. No problem, human. It was quite entertaining. Now you might excuse me. This is where we take our leave. Before Ezekiel could fly off, Spider-Man asked, uh, asked the question, what's, what's your name, kid? Ezekiel, and yours, Spider-Man. Your friendly hood spider. Your friendly hood spider. I probably butchered that, but yeah, it's, it's been a while since I, um, no, it's your neighborhood, your friendly, your friendly hood neighborhood spider. There we go. The moment, when the moment uh, Deku took off, if it wasn't for Spider-Man's abilities, he would have been flown into the wall because of the pure wind pressure given off when the Izuku took flight. When Deku returned where his parents were, as he sees some odd-looking humans wearing strange costumes in front of the Avenger headquarters, as the Avenger sees something moving towards them extremely fast, as the Avengers get into a fighting stance, expecting some trouble, as Inka walks past Natasha, you, you don't need to worry, humans, it's my little boy. As Deku lands in front of Inka, did you have fun, my little Black Raven? I didn't mother. These humans are very interesting. I want you to I want to introduce you to some people. As Inka introduced the Avengers to her son. Me and your father has decided to allow you to spread your wings a little bit. What do you mean, mother? I'll be sending you to human school, of course. A human school. As much as I I'm not keen uh, of the idea, but it's best for your development. I'll be sending you to a school. I have no problems. I find humans quite an interesting species anyways. It's not your average human school. My little black raven. It's a school filled with... Humans with abilities, they call mutants. Majority of them are, there's a good, there, there's a good portion of the humans that have abilities. Some are just regular humans. I want, oh sorry, while you attend this school, I want you to keep what we are secret. I want you to, I want you to deserve these new type of human beings called mutants. If the humans find out of your or what you are, erase their memories like like I've told, like I taught you. Will do. When 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 do we leave, mother? Tomorrow. As Inko embraces her son in, in 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 a hug, I'm gonna miss you, my little black raven. Jeez, mom, it's not like I'm going to a different world. I'm your mother. I will always worry about you. Tomorrow, I'll show you around. You'll be staying. Where you be staying? It's nearby the school. Everything's been paid for. Let's head. Let's head. Let's head home, dear. N no, uh, no, Natasha, contact me if something comes up. Of course, Inko. I'm just glad that we're having another girl on the team. 
as Hosashi, Doctor Strange, and Inko, and uh, Izuku say goodbye to the Avengers. As we time skip the next day, Inko show her son his new place. It's a two-story house filled with furniture and a full stock refrigerator with food cabinets filled with food and all that. As Inko gave him a cell phone, as Inko showed him the hidden function of the phone, as long as he pressed this button, he'll send it. He'll send out a distress call to the Avengers to his location. If something ever ever happened to him, as that's probably where we're gonna stop our part off there. Hope you guys have a good night and day. Judging my time zones, and I'll catch you in the next video.